I'm doing all right. Good, good. Now, we're speaking off the heels of what transpired yesterday. Um, bit of a black eye on, on, um, on how America is viewed with what happened yesterday. Uh, just, for, just for clarification, yesterday, Wednesday afternoon at the US Capitol, um, we were gonna have senators from each of the states certify the election results for the 2020 presidential election to certify in Joe Biden as the 46th president of the United States. What happened from there, protesters begin to um, break into the US Capitol, um, breach the Senate floor and into um, Senator's offices inside the US Capitol and uh, violence ensued from there. Uh, but we were talking off camera, you were actually in DC at the US Capitol yesterday, correct? Yes, yes I was. I was there um, on ground zero uh, yeah, it's uh, it's insane. These past 24 hours have been crazy. Um, it's definitely not what I was expecting to happen while I traveled up to D.C. Um, as somebody who supports President Trump, I definitely was not expecting that to happen. Um, I didn't want that to happen. Um, definitely better ways to go about um, your frustrations, um, which I was there. I've talked to so many people while I was at the protest. Um, and I understand that people are hurt, they're in pain, they feel like their voices aren't being heard through their votes because they're, um, they're second guessing the legitimacy of this election. Um, and you kind of have to put yourself in those people's shoes. Um, we see illegitimate elections, you know, it's happened. It's not something that is, it's never happened before, it's never been done, this is so out of the blue, it's happened. You know, and um, we, we, we've seen it, you know, if you just look into a history book, you will see that it's kind of where communism starts. So people are scared, you know, and um, you have to understand that. And uh, I think just being again, it all goes back to open mindedness, you have to just be welcoming of, you know, people's concerns and these people don't feel like their concerns have been taken seriously. So that's why they breached the Capitol yesterday. Um, but it's obviously should never have been done. Um, and he is going to be our 46th president. Um, Joe Biden is going to be our 46th president. And um, it's something that even as a Republican, you have to just, you know, go on with. It's not what I wanted. It's not what 75 million people wanted, but you know, he is the pilot and he is driving this plane, you know, so it's, we have to wish him the best and we have to make sure that he's going to do right by our country. Um, we have to make sure that we hopefully can believe what he says about, you know, he's going to work with even for people who didn't vote for him, you know, whether you voted for me or not, I'm going to be your president. I'm going to listen to you and um, to your wants and needs. And that's all we can do. Um, but I definitely do not agree with what happened at the Capitol yesterday. Now, President Trump held a rally yesterday, um, yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon and into the morning, um, Wednesday morning and Wednesday afternoon. He was protesting the results of the election. He was citing fraud, citing irregularities in the 2020 presidential election process. Um, what, what happened after the rally ended? Uh, people were gathering um, by the US Capitol. What did you see from your vantage point there? So yeah, I was there at the rally when we were protesting the integrity of the election, the election results, um, super peaceful. Everything was good. We were singing songs, um, God bless America. We were singing the national anthem. We were having such a great time. Everybody was talking with each other. You know, we had people from all over the country. I mean, whether it was California, New York, Florida, Texas, Tennessee, I mean, they were everywhere. You know, we had Utah, <laughs> there's a Trumper over there. He's not from Utah. Um, yeah, we had everybody everywhere. And um, it was really great to talk with everybody. And we were having a really great time. Um, during, towards the end of um, President Trump's speech, he told us to go to the Capitol and, um, you know, just protest in front of there, obviously peacefully. Um, and I actually steered away to go get lunch before everybody went to the Capitol. And so after I finished, like right toward the end of lunch, I heard on the news that they had breached the Capitol. 
And so at first I was like, wait a minute, this has to be something else or what's going on. So then we started seeing videos and they were on top of the steps and everything. And so I then went to the Capitol, um, started walking toward again, walking toward everything was peaceful. Nobody was running. There was no fire. There was nothing. Everybody was just walking with their flags, singing, dancing, everything, you know, and, um, then all of a sudden I just, when the Capitol comes into view, I'm just seeing like a lot of people up on the steps. And um, first thing they did when they went up on the steps was they hung an American flag, um, which I thought was interesting. I was like, wow, okay. So um, it's the first thing they do. And then they hung a Trump flag and everything. And uh, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't see them breaking into it, obviously. That's a whole different area, but yeah. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I saw. And then I just stood out there for about 30 minutes, kind of took it in, talked with some more people right outside of it. Like, I mean, even on the steps, they seem to be very, you know, peaceful people. They kind of just were standing there on the steps. Um, now for the people breaking in, I can't say they were peaceful. Um, but we also have to look at this that um, it's very easy to throw on a Trump shirt and it's very easy to hold a Trump flag and just say, you know, like, oh, well, these people are Trump people, you know, when they were breaking in. I mean, you're going to have the groups of people who just kind of follow where everything's happening. Um, so do I think that there were people who broke into the Capitol that were Trump people? Yes. But were they all Trump people? No. And that's the same thing that goes for Black Lives Matter protesters is that they're not all Black Lives Matter protesters. You know, and I had heard that multiple times from people who were protesting peacefully in Black Lives Matter. You know, I was in Miami when there was a protesting for BLM. Um, and it was very peaceful. You know, they were just walking down the street and they were protesting. And I was like, you are exercising your First Amendment right good for you, you know, and, um, but again, you know, the more, the media portrays it as they're all bad, you know, it's all of them, you know, and even when it was happening with BLM for these last six months, and they were only showing the fires and the buildings being burned and everything, I was kind of sitting there like, I saw with my own eyes, that's not all of what's happening, you know, and why are you focusing only on that? you know, good things are coming out of this, you know, they're trying to show that there's injustice in a peaceful way. And you're only showing these crazy people who just use the situation to get attention, you know, to just be destructive. Um, and that's, again, kind of the similar thing that happened here. And then we had, as you were saying, there was a few people that broke into the U.S. Capitol. A bunch of videos and pictures made their way onto the Internet. We saw people storming the Senate floor. We saw um, a couple people in Nancy Pelosi's office and things turned a little violent. Um, we found out yesterday that a woman was shot, now, now confirmed to be an Ashley Babbitt, who is a 14 year veteran of the Air Force. We then found out a few hours after she was shot that she was fatally wounded and died. Um, violent protests, protesting in, in America, I think everyone can agree, is an American right to voice your differences. But ever since last summer and, and yesterday, of course, um, protesting has turned violent in some cases. With what happened yesterday, what is your, and what's surrounding this frustration, maybe around the presidential um, process and the presidential election, what is your view on democracy and how do you think this will affect um, future elections? Um, well, obviously the, the passing of, you know, of our, of one of our veterans, I think she was a veteran 14 years. She served for 14 years. Um, I'm obviously a very strong advocate of the military. Um, you know, I kneel for the fallen. I stand up for our flag. I'm, you know, my, I have a lot of family in the military. Um, I was very saddened to hear about her death. You know, she simply just wanted to come here and support her president and it ended um, horribly. And um, my heart goes out to her family. Um, but this do definitely does put a dent in our democracy, um, but I, <laughs> I am not losing faith in it at all. Um, I think it can be restored, but it can't be restored with this type of division. Um, we, you know, it's, it's a, we are one nation under God and, you know, divided we fall, you know? So I believe that the media is the one to blame for this. I think they 110% have caused this division. And it's, you look at 
everything and you and it all leads back to the media you know um you look at blm you know and it's just how they portrayed it you know everything is just bad bad you know when they look at the trump protests everything is bad 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 they never show the good and all of that causes division they pretend to be on your side but at the end of the day they just show the bad in everything and sooner or later that causes you to only see the bad in people you know the only see the bad in these sorts of people you know and and that just ultimately causes causes a rift between all of us and that's what they want because it's so much easier to take control over a country you know and over a government over anything you want to take control over if you divide people you know you we are so much stronger together and we cannot be divided because this country is not going to, to 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 succeed you know we are going to fail if we are divided so we have to shut off the media we have to walk the streets we have to start doing our own research you know and steer away from all of this bias you know whether it's fox news whether it's cnn you know left wing or right wing it, it doesn't matter you know you need to just just walk the streets and talk to people you know i mean get to know people on a personal level don't just judge them by what the media says you know not everybody is the same not everybody is the same you know everybody is an individual person you know stop labeling someone this thing because somebody did something that was kind of on the same side you know it's it everybody is an individual you know we have to stop with this collective thinking in this group think you know everybody is different you don't know that person's story you don't know what they believe in who they are you know and it's very 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 important that we just stop with the social media and believing everything you hear and we have to start getting out talking to people getting to know people and you'll actually find out that a we have a lot in common b we have we all kind of want the same things we all want what's best for us you know we're all in this country we all kind of deal with similar problems whether it's you know keeping food on the table or a roof over our heads you know wanting a good education wanting the best for our country we all want those type those sort of things you know so we just sit and talk to each other and you know just think about how we can get there whether we have similarities or differences we can find that middle ground you know but we can't divide this country you know i 110% believe that that's what the media wants you know you look back again in history you know with socialism and communism you look at how they've taken over countries and how they've divided and you know one of the things is academia you know another thing is the media another thing is celebrities you know um taking the father out of the home taking religion out you know it's all and you can interpret that as you will you know but it's all a system and it's steps that they take you know and unfortunately it's working in america but we need to stop that and i don't think it's too late to stop it i think that we are super powerful together and we can definitely turn this around it's definitely not too late well yesterday was indeed a sore spot for the country i agree with you that most americans across this nation um really just want to come together and end this civil discourse this 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 confrontation between one another over beliefs and come together and peacefully be united in these united states gabriella i greatly appreciate your time speaking with night news and with myself thank you very much yeah thank you